Hello everyone, David Credit Nation brings to you another SAP FICO tutorial video. This time not just any tutorial video but a very important one. This is FIMM integration or procure to pay cycle. So many a times whenever a FICO consultant is interviewed whether he is of 4 years of experience or 10 years of experience mostly the interviewer will ask FIMM integration point. Now let's understand the point where FI and MM gets integrated. The integration point happens at the procure to pay cycle. What is a procure to pay cycle? It is also known as B2B cycle. In daily operations, there are different types of cycle. For example, order to cash cycle in the accounts receivable side or procure to pay cycle in the accounts payable side. So these are the four components mostly in procure to pay cycle. So first, suppose an organization realizes that they need to acquire some goods. Suppose for example, we are manufacturing chairs and tables. So for that I would be needing wood. The wood will be needed to manufacture the chair and tables. We'll create a purchase requisition. In the requisition, we'll ask the vendor that, hey, we need this much of wood of this quality. Please get that arranged for me. Then the vendor agrees that, hey, I can arrange those goods for you. You just need to send me a purchase order. Organization will send a purchase order stating what type of good is required for how much quantity. So that is called purchase order and against purchase order the vendor will send the goods. So this is called goods receipt. So once the purchase order is received the vendor would set the goods. They will match whatever quality of good is required for whatever quantity they will send us. So once the goods receipt is done then they will send us the invoice. So they will send that we have shipped you this much quantity of goods and this is my bill please make the payment and finally the organization will make the outgoing payment to the vendor. So this is the procure to pay cycle. So procurement starts that means we are acquiring or we are procuring goods from the vendor and finally we are making the outgoing payments. Now I'm going to show you the procure to pay cycle and at the end I am going to show you the back end configuration which a uh, FI consultant must know. So let's get started with the procure to pay cycle. So first I have to create a business partner. So let me click on this create button and I'm going to create a person BP. So I'm going to need the BP role. First I will create the FI BP FLVN00 is the FI vendor role. So I'll create this role first. Say the vendor's name is Sean Michaels. And I would fill the street address and all. So now the BP is getting created. I haven't created the BP. Now here I'm going to get inside the uh, financial accounting vendor role. There I need to assign my company code. So go to company code data. There I have to create and I'll assign my company code which is 6000 and I would be needing the reconciliation GL. So trade payables domestic apply. So my business partner is ready. Now I'm going to extend the vendor to the purchase organization view. So for that go to the roles and click on create button. So let me look for the role FLVN01. So the difference between FLVN00 and FLVN01 is FLVN00 is for the FI vendor. If I want to integrate my FI with MM, I need to create this role. I need to extend my vendor to this FLVN01 role. Now get inside here I would assign my purchasing organization. So this is my purchasing organization. Now click on create. Assign purchasing organization. And I would be needing the order currency as well. So USD is my order currency. Then apply. Apply. Save. So my business partner is created. So Sean Michaels is a business partner from which I'm going to buy some wood because I'm going to manufacture some wooden furniture. Let me create the purchase order. So for that in traditional GUI the T code is ME21N but as I told you that if you don't remember those stupid T codes in Fury that will also serve your purpose. Just look for create purchase order. So the UI is almost the same. So I'm going to use a standard PO. Now I need to enter my vendor. 
okay let me put a search term so that i can easily identify my business partner so in the search term one let me add hbk as the search term so that i can easily identify my business partner now in the vendor now let me look for hbk so san antonio texas sean michaels this is my uh, vendor now expand the header data enter the org details so purchase organization is 6000 purchasing group is 600 and company code, code is 6000 now expand the item overview so here i'm going to place an order of item number one i'm going to place so my material number is 73 which is wood so see i have already created the material wood now i need to buy suppose 10 kg of wood and uh, the delivery date that is sean michaels will deliver the goods on say uh, 27th of september and my net price per kg of wood is suppose eight dollar and i would need this wood in my plant 6200 and also i would like to specify the storage location as well so under plant 6200 my storage location is going to be say uh, 6201 now click on enter so looks fine just ignore the warning message now click on this check button it will tell us if there is any error so only warning message which are fine now i'm going to save it save so the purchase order is created now let me open the purchase order which is also called po click on other purchase order and paste and click on other document so this is my po ready now I'm going to do the goods receipts. So here I have already done. I have already done purchase order. The next step is goods receipt. So I'm going to post goods receipt now. So again, you can also search the application from the T code. So in classic GUI, the T code used to be MIGO for goods receipt. You can search with MIGO. It will tell us post goods movement is the application name get inside of it and all you need to do is enter your purchase order so it will reference everything from the purchase order enter the purchase order which is this one and click on enter so it is fetching everything from the purchase order so it has fetched that 10 quantity of wood is needed um, this is a movement type so you don't have to if you are a fi consultant you don't have to be concerned about the movement type this all belongs to the mm team so everything is fine now click on this item okay and click on this check to see things are okay or not all good now click on post the document is posted now this is a material document previously when i posted my purchase order there was no financial impact but a goods movement creates financial document so let's see i'm going to execute my purchase order once again click on other document and you will see this tab purchase order history previously this tab was not available because purchase order does not create a financial entry but goods movement or goods receipt does so this is my material document you see 10 quantity of goods has been received and price is 8 per kg total amount is 80 usd now get inside of this material document click on doc info tab and click on fi document to see the financial document so here you will see two type of document one accounting document and the other one is a material ledger i'm not going to talk about material ledger in this session because material ledger will take more than one session so let's talk about the accounting document double click on it to see the accounting document so the accounting document is raw material stock account debit goods receipt invoice receipt clearing account credit now what is a grir account now whenever we purchase something from a vendor in normal accounting sense what entry do we pass so the entry should be raw material stock account debit and sean michaels account should be created but instead we are creating a grir clearing account why we are creating this account because we haven't received the invoice yet we have received the goods only so it may happen that the invoice amount may be higher than this 80 dollar now whenever the uh, invoice is received suppose sean michaels invoice us with 90 dollar this also may happen so that's why we are not crediting the vendor yet once the vendor sends us the invoice i will credit the vendor then on the next step which is uh, ap invoice there we will credit the vendor 
so right now i have just completed goods receipt so this is the accounting entry raw material stock debit grir account credit so i'm going to show you in the last uh, part of this video the backend config where these gls are automatically derived let me quickly show you the material ledger document double click on it so it will show you that in this plant 10 quantity of wood has been received total value is 80 dollar that's it now come back so i have completed the second step which is goods is it now i'm going to post the ap invoice let me show you one ui of fiori so similar to this create purchase order there is one more app called manage purchase order the screen has loaded i'm going to search for purchase order of my company code click on enter the company code and click on go so this one is my sean michaels this one is my po so get inside of it and sap shows you a very good flow in fury see we have a very good beautiful logo to show the standard view so a person is shopping in a shopping mall like that so click on this items so, so this is the item 10 kg 8 per unit so total is 80 dollar just get inside of it and scroll down all the way to the bottom of the screen you'll see a very beautiful flow so scroll down see a process flow has been generated this process flow is similar to this one purchase order is completed see this is a purchase order then goods receipt is completed so this is the goods receipt next step is ap invoice okay so this view is not available in the classic gui but it is available in fury so i'm going to receive the invoice from this vendor so again suppose i have forgotten the application name but i know in classic gui the t code is miro to receive invoice the t code is miro so create supplier invoice is the application name get inside so for example we have received the goods today now uh, say the vendor is sending the invoice on say 23rd now i don't know the amount but i know the purchase order so all i need to do just enter the purchase order everything will be referenced so enter the purchase order here and click on enter so see it has fetched that 8 dollar into 10 kg so my total amount is 80 just pass 80 in the header and go to the payment tab here we need to enter the baseline date so things are fine now i'm going to post this now document is posted now let's go back to the manage purchase order screen just hit the back button once and get inside of it to see the entire flow see now the flow is completed purchase order goods received and invoicing the flow that i was going to show you so this one is also done now let's see the accounting document when i invoice it what is the accounting document so for that i have to go back to my purchase order back and click on other purchase order because i need to refresh this screen because now i have one document now invoice has created the other document so this is the invoice enter click on the follow on document to see the fi documents so this is my fi document now goods receipt and invoice receipt clearing debit and sean michaels credit so if i show you the accounting document in an excel so this is my accounting document when i did goods receipt my accounting document was raw material debit and grir credit and when i do the vendor invoicing my grir is debit and my vendor is credit so ultimately this grir credit and grir debit gets knocked off the final accounting entry remains raw material stock account debit and vendor account credit so this is just for clearing so why this clearing is required suppose on month end say on 30th of the month we have received the goods but the vendor hasn't sent the invoice the vendor sends the invoice on the second of the next month now on 30th when i do the reporting the periodic or monthly reporting i want to book this entry i cannot credit the vendor so that's why on the second of the next month once the invoice is received then i will book this entry so then this grir gets knocked off so that's why we use this clearing account concept in uh, sap you have seen this clearing account if you have gone through my other videos for example i have shown you this in the electronic bank statement process there we used bank incoming and bank outgoing account as clearing account which gets nullified every single day and the final payments or receipts are being stored in the bank main account the last step is outgoing payment i'm not going to pay this customer here because i have already shown you how to execute automatic payment now let's quickly go through the backend config 
where these GLs are determined. Now open SPRO, go to material management, under that valuation and account assignment. Now account determination, account determination without wizard. Group together valuation areas. Now get inside here for my valuation areas. I mean, these are plans for my plans and for my company code 6000. I'm using a valuation group called X. I'll show you shortly what is the benefit of this X. And before that, let me quickly show you my material master. So MM03 is the T code. I can show you from Fury as well. But let me quickly show you from here. So I need the accounting view only. So see, I have created three separate valuation classes, 60 RM. And uh, so this is a raw material. That's why you can see only RM. So 60 RM, 60 FG and 60 SF. RM means raw material, FG means finished goods and SF means semi-finished goods. Okay. Now the core area, core config, which every interviewer will ask you is OBYC. Go to OBYC. These GL determinations are maintained in OBIC. From my Excel, what I showed you that raw material account debit 340,000, but I had this BSX, WRX, what are these? These are components of OBYC. So once you go to OBYC, you will see different, different transactions. So get inside the BSX, which is inventory posting. So here, get inside and enter your chart of account. So here I have assigned my GL accounts. So whenever I am going to purchase a finished goods, GL account 34 all zero two will be picked up for raw materials. I just purchased a raw material. So 34 all zero are picked up. And if I would have purchased a semi finished goods, then 34 all zero one would have picked up. And I have grouped everything using this X. I just showed you this X before. This is for determining my uh, goods receipt where raw material account debit and GRIR account credit. I haven't shown you GRIR yet. So BSX is the transaction for the raw material or a raw metal stock, finished goods stock or semi-finished goods stock. Now for GRIR, come down and look for WRX. So this is GRIR clearing account. Get inside for both raw material purchase or semi-finished goods purchase. I am using this 3,50,000 as my GRIR account. So this is how the GL accounts are being determined. So this GL and this GL and for vendor, you already know that I have just created the vendor in the start of my video. So if I go back to my vendor and so roles, so under the FLVN00, go to company codes, get inside. So here I have assigned the GL account to 11000 and the same GL account is so if I open my vendor invoice, so this is my Sean Michaels get in. So this is the, this is not GL account. This is the vendor number. If you get inside, you will see the same GL account that is trade payable domestic GL account is determined. So whatever transaction I just posted, nowhere I have specified any GL account. All the GL accounts are automatically determined. This is an example where we can automatically determine GL account. So this is just a basic scenario of P2P cycle in actual production. There can be multiple account determination. For example, there can be freight, there can be taxes and there can be price difference. So all those things I'm not going to cover in this video, but this is the basic crux, which you must know before appearing for any interview. So if you love this video, do subscribe to our channel, debit credit nation and share it with your friends. Next time we'll meet again with another tutorial video till then. Happy learning.